good afternoon uh, good morning to those of you on the west coast uh, this is sk gosh i would like to welcome each and every one of you to our web seminar today uh, we have titled it important developments in the seismic design of diaphragms we will talk uh, specifically about important changes in diaphragm in in that in the design provisions for seismic design of diaphragms in ace 716 uh, that 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 is where we will specifically go okay with that a a an overview of the the seminar there is an a, an introductory section where i talk about uh, basics of diaphragms, particularly precast concrete diaphragms, because that is a major thrust of the new provisions. Uh, the provi the you, you will see that, that part of what we will talk about is it's quite general, but then part of what we will talk about is specific to uh, precast concrete diaphragms. Uh, then we will go to the alternative seismic design force level for diaphragms. This is alternative to what is given in AC 710 uh, section 12.10. And, and uh, this is just an outline, obviously I will give you details. Then we will compare the diaphragm design force levels by the alternate uh, by, by provisions and by AC 710 provisions, which still remain in AC 716. And finally, uh, precast concrete diaphragm design methodology that is in chapter 14 of AC 716. I, I will briefly introduce you to what we have placed in, in that chapter of AC 716. And that part goes hand in hand with the alternative diaphragm design force level. The final item I would request you to uh, cross out. Uh, that, that is something I decided <laughs> after putting together this slide much afterwards. Uh, did not really belong in this web seminar, but I uh, forgot to delete it. Okay, so please, please delete the last one. <coughs> This slide shows obviously a precast concrete parking structure, but, but that is not our thrust. We are talking about diaphragms. Now, uh, this floor has four diaphragms. You can take it from, one would be from here to there, another would be from here to there, the third one will be from here to there, and the fourth one will be from here to there. Okay. or you can divide it differently, whichever way. Now, now, what is a diaphragm? I, I thought of including a more basic picture, but then I didn't. Uh, any slab uh, carries gravity loads. We, we actually would build a slab in order to carry live loads, which is a gravity load. And in order to carry live loads, we have to carry the dead loads. All, all those vertical loads cause out of plane bending of the diaphragm. Now, if this uh, parking structure or whatever structure the slab belongs to is subject to, <coughs> subject to earthquake excitation, uh, which would mean that the foundation underneath the structure starts moving all of a sudden, every which way, there will be earthquake forces which are inertia forces generated at the floor levels where the masses are. Those inertia forces uh, are in-plane forces, which will cause in-plane bending of the same slabs that bend out of plane under gravity. Okay, So the same slab that resists gravity by out of plane bending will resist the inertia forces caused by earthquakes or, or in-plane forces caused by wind by in-plane bending. So in-plane bending would mean that this slab 
is bending in its own plane like a, uh, a, a, a deep beam, there will be tension along. If this is the earthquake direction from front to back, there will be tension along this edge of the diaphragm. There will be compression along that edge of the diaphragm. There will be shear along the parallel edges. I, I, I hope you get the picture.